let's say that, that we're on one side and we have a million drones and there's another side over here that has another million drones. Each side will use reinforcement learning AI strategies to do battle plans, but neither side can figure out what the other side's battle plan is. And therefore, the deterrence against attacking each other will be very high. Today, the way military planners operate is that they count weapons. They say, well, you have this many, and I have this many, and you can do this kind of a maneuver and so forth. B but in an AI world where you're doing reinforcement learning, you can't count what the other side is planning. You can't see it. You don't know it. So former Google CEO Dr. Eric Schmidt once again dropped some bombshell statements while talking in an AI summit last week. He said he's extremely concerned about how AGI could affect our lives. He says the arrival of AGI is not too far off, coming in the next four to five years. Let's listen. We are in this high-tech competition with China. They obviously care about AI too. They're trying to race ahead. How do you, uh, I, I understand that you recently made, made a trip there. How do you um, handicap this, this, this competition? Well, well, you and I just talked about this yeah. as part of your, as your incredibly important work in the White House. Um, I had thought that China and the United States were competing at the peer level in AI, and that the good work that you have done and your predecessors did to restrict chips were slowing them down. They're really doing something more different than I thought. They're not pursuing crazy AGI strategies, partly because of the hardware limitations that you've put in place, but partly because the depth of their capital markets don't exist. They can't raise, based on a wing and a prayer, $100 million or a MMB equivalent to, to build the data centers. They just can't do it. And so the result is they're very focused on taking AI and applying it to everything. And so the concern I have is that while we're pursuing AGI, which is incredibly interesting and we should talk about, and all of us will be affected by this, we better also be competing with the Chinese in day-to-day -day stuff. Right. Consumer apps, this is something you understand very well, Chamath. Uh, consumer apps, uh, robots, and so forth and so on. I saw all the, sh the Shanghai robotics companies, and these guys are attempting to do in robots what they've successfully done with elect electric vehicles. Right, and they're re they, their work ethic's incredible, they're well-funded. It's not the crazy valuations that we have in America. Right. They can't raise the capital, but they can win across that. The other thing the Chinese are doing, and I want to emphasize this as a major geopolitical issue, is that my own background is open source. In the audience, you all know open source means open code, open, weight, open weights means open training data. China is competing with open weights and open training data, and the U.S. is largely and majority focused on closed weights, closed data. That means that the majority of the world, think of it as the Belt and Road Initiative, are going to use Chinese models and not American models. Now, I happen to think the West and democracies are correct, and I'd much rather have the proliferation of large language models and that learning be done based on Western values. Eric, we had a, a major open source initiative um, with Meta, you know, incredible balance sheet, tremendous technical firepower, but they seem to have misexecuted and now are taking a step back and reformulating something to your point that looks a little bit more closed source. It's not clear. I, you know, Alex Wang's a good friend. Uh, he's come in, he's taken over. He's obviously incredibly, uh, incredibly capable. I would not hold, uh, keep, um, I, I would not say that they're going fully closed. And I think also they got screwed up because the deep seek people, uh, R1, did such a good job Right. If you look at the reasoning model in DeepSeek, and in particular their ability to do reinforcement learning forward and back, forward and back, and forward and back, this is a major achievement. And it appears that they're doing it with less precision than uh, numeric precision than the American models. As a bit of technical things, uh, there's something called FP64, FP32, FP16. The American models are typically using 16-bit precision for their training. The Chinese are pushing eight and now even four. Is there, is there something that um, the American, you know, bigger companies need to be doing in open source so that we can actually combat this? Well, a number of the large companies have said that they want to be leaders in open source as well. Um, Sam Altman indicated that the smallest version of the O3 model would be released, uh, I believe, open weights, and they have done so. And he told me anyway that this model is much smaller than 10 to the 26. It's much easier to train and it will fit or, or can fit on your phone. So w one path is to say that we'll have these supercomputers doing AGI, which will always be incredibly expensive and so forth. 
but we also have to watch to make sure that the proliferation of these models for handheld devices is under American control, whether it's OpenAI or Meta or Gemini or what have you. So in this part, Dr. Schmidt talks about AGI and how it's going to hit humanity really hard. In the wake of ChatGPT launching at the end of 2022, I think the discourse was really dominated in 2023 and 24 by this idea of AGI and that AGI was imminent. And I think it created almost like a panicky atmosphere in Washington among policymakers. And you saw things like we got to restrict open source because, you know, then China will get it. And, um, and this is before DeepSea launched. And then we saw that actually they're ahead of us on open source. But it feels like there's been um, a pullback a little bit from the AGI narrative, which I think I think is actually a good thing. I think it's more conducive to calm, rational policy making. What's your perception of AGI right now? Where where are we on that whole train? I don't agree with you on this on this AGI thing because there's this group which I call the San Francisco um, narrative because they all live in San Francisco and their narrative goes something like this. Um, today we're doing agents. Uh, the agentic revolution will change businesses, which I agree with. Um, that what happens is the systems will become rec recursively self in self intelligent with recursive self improvement, as it's called. If you have a scale-free problem, and a scale-free problem, for example, is programming or math, where you can just keep doing it, you get these enormous fast gains. If you p buy enough hardware, or do enough software, or so forth and so on, that is still underway. The collective of that says that in the next three-ish years, they believe that we will get forms of superintelligence. And the way they define it, is basically a savant, a chemist savant, a physics savant, a mathematician savant. I don't agree with the three years, but I do agree that it'll be maybe six or seven years. But if it's a savant in you know, a particular area, is that general intelligence? It's not general intelligence yet. General intelligence is when it can set its own objective function. Right. And no, there's no evidence of that. There's yet. no evidence right now of the ability to set your own objective function um, the, the, the thinking, and I'm writing a paper on this, so I've been studying it, is that the, 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 the technical problem is non-stationarity of mathematical proofs. And that what you're doing is you're trying to solve against objective function, but the objective function keeps changing, which is how humans operate. Your goal changes every day, whereas computers have trouble with that. As a math problem, we don't have an algorithm yet for LLMs that can do that. People are working on it. Um, and the, the test will be, can you basically, um, using the information available in 1902, can you derive the same thing that Einstein did with special rel relativity followed by general relativity? We cannot do that today. Um, and most people believe that the way this will be solved is through analogy. So the theory of great geniuses is that they understand one area extremely well, and they're so brilliant, the late, later man can then take their ideas and apply it to a completely different domain. If we can solve that problem, then I think it's over. Then we get to AGI, and then it's a whole different world. I think w one of the reasons why it's hard to replace a human, and you know, JK and I debate this, is that humans are end to end. You know, we can do the whole job you have sort of a complete understanding. You can pivot very easily. AI, at least as we know it today, is not end-to-end. -end. It has to be prompted. You get an answer. That answer has to be validated. Then you have to ask a new question because it never gives you exactly what you want. You have to apply more context. You have to go through an iterative loop. Finally, you get to an answer that has business value. The way biology puts it is that AI is not end-to-end. -end, it's middle-to-middle. -middle. Humans are end-to-end. -end. And so as a result of that, instead of AI replacing all of us, AI will be very synergistic with humans because we can define the objective function, we do the prompting, and we work with it to iterate, and it does a lot of the work in the middle. Uh, that seems to me like a very optimistic, less doomeristic take on it. Uh, what, what, you what you just said is exactly what's going to happen for the next few years. That each of us will have assistance, which on our command and our prompting will be incredibly helpful to whatever problem we have, you know, personal, uh, you have people who are using these things for relationship advice, for, you know, talking to their kids. I mean, it's all crazy stuff. 
Um, but the fact of the matter is, that's it. Th th to me, the real question is, when does it cross over to having its own volition, its own ability to seek information and solve new problems? That's a different animal. But have we seen any evidence of recursive self-improvement yet? Um, not yet. I'm, I'm, I've funded a number of startups which claim to be close to it. But of course, these are startups and you never know, which tells me it's five, 10 years. How do, you, how do you think Google's doing on this front? Um, well, I'm not at Google anymore. Yep. Uh, every issue of Gemini is top of the leaderboard. So 2.5 just overcame everybody, and I'm sure there's another one coming. Um, Demis is working really hard on this question about um, scientific discovery. So that's a pa that is a path to getting to AGI. Now, this is a really interesting part of the interview. Here, Dr. Schmidt explains brilliantly how AI is going to totally change wars between countries. The rough way in which war will evolve is first, things will have to be very, very mobile and very much not in fixed places. This takes out most of the military infrastructure that exists in the world. Um, things like tanks, um, of which we're now building a whole bunch more, even stronger tanks here in America, don't make any sense in a world where a two kilogram payload from a, uh, a well-armed drone can destroy the tank. It's called the kill ratio, and that drone costs retail $5,000, $4,000. The tank, the American tank, costs $30 million. You can see the, the, you can send an awful lot of those drones to destroy those tanks. Um, the likely evolution goes something like this. So first, people learn that drones are like rifles and like artillery. So it's more efficient to use drones now than to use mortars, grenades, artillery. That's clear. If you just look at the economics, economics in terms of cost or effectiveness, as it's called. Um, the next thing that happens is that both sides develop drone capabilities, which is what you're seeing now, and each then becomes a war of drone against drone. So you have drone against anti-drone. And so then the shift moves to how do you detect the enemy drone and how do you destroy it before it destroys you? So the doctrine ultimately is the drones are forward and the people are behind. And I've seen operations in, for example, sitting in Kyiv where the Ukrainians are commanding things over Starlink, I might add, um, in, the distance, in the distant war, and they're very, very effective. So we've solved the latency problems, we've solved the timing problems and so forth in that area. The ultimate state is very interesting, and I don't think anyone has foreseen this. If you go back to our conversation about RL and planning, which is what you're seeing with AI, let's say that, that we're on one side and we have a million drones, and there's another side over here that has another million drones. Each side will use reinforcement learning AI strategies to do battle plans, but neither side can figure out what the other side's battle plan is and therefore the deterrence against attacking each other will be very high. Today, the way military planners operate is that they count weapons. They say, well, you have this many and I have this many and you can do this kind of a maneuver and so forth. B but in an AI world where you're doing reinforcement learning, you can't count what the other side is planning. You can't see it, you don't know it, and I believe that that will deter what I view as one of the most horrendous things ever done by humans, which is war. Eric, um, we appreciate the work you're doing. Uh, we appreciate you being here with us. We appreciate what you've done, the impact you've had on Silicon Valley uh, as a society. It's <laughs> Too really, nice. Yeah. No, but it's, it's really been... I, I am so happy to be part of this. You created this incredible community, and <laughs> there's all of these smart people that spend all their time listening to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very concerning. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, straight there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.